everybody. Welcome back to Brailsford Family Homestead. I'm Darcy. Today we're going to be making a tote bag from a feed bag. <laughs> this um, I used I'm all summer long as a pool bag and other things. I have some other styles that I use um, when I do grocery shopping or taking things other places and I really like them and a lot of places you you have to have your own bag so might as well repurpose these feed bags. You do need the ones that have like the the woven not just the smooth like some dog food bags are that are just plastic and smooth those don't really work so i also put snaps on mine i use plastic cam snaps if you can see that i really like using those so if you have something like that you can do that too i repurposed some nylon webbing i had bought some online it's fairly inexpensive but i had a tent shed we had to take down uh, got destroyed and there was a lot of this so I reused it for handles but you can just take pieces of the feed bag like this and make handles this takes a little bit more time but you don't need anything extra then you'll need a piece of cardboard to put in the bottom I like it it just strengthens it so if you don't have any you don't have to use it but I like just it gives it some more structure so any you know Amazon boxes or anything you have if you are going to use snaps I use cam snaps. I just have the handheld uh, press. You need some scissors. I use a rotary cutter um, with a blade that I'm not using on fabric things anymore. Um, I would not use your fabric scissors on these bags. I just use some regular sharp scissors, something to measure with. Um, I would use, a, I use these needles. I get them from wawak.com and this is a 116 and then coordinating thread and of course your sewing machine. So I'm gonna apologize in advance because this will make a lot of noise, not just the machine, but moving around these bags is just loud, so sorry. <laughs> so first thing you're gonna do is wash your bag before you ever bring it in your house. <laughs> it's probably dirty from sitting outside. Who knows if you have animals like us, what could be on there? Plus you don't want any of the feed or whatever was inside to get in your machine. So you know, spray it off with the hose, bring it inside, put it in the tub, use a scrub brush, something, just get it nice and clean and let it dry. And for a bag, you, you don't need to cut it down the sides or anything. You just leave it how it is, but you are going to trim the bottom and the top if, if it got kind of mangled, depending on how you were able to open it. If you got that string the right time, <laughs> the first the right time or not. So I like to leave mine pretty much the size that they are. Um, but if you're going to use um, this to make straps, then you're gonna wanna cut about three to four inches off of the bottom so that you have that to make your straps. Um, but you know, just if you have, for some reason, more blank space up at the top, cut it from the top because you, you are going to fold this down and you obviously want to see the design if you're using a pretty bag like I am. Okay, I went ahead and turned my bag inside out to spare you all of that loud noise. <laughs> so you're gonna just make sure that it's folded properly on the, the side so it's centered because we're going to sew down the, the end here, the bottom. So make sure first <laughs> that you're on the bottom. Yes, I am. And you're just gonna leave, you know, a quarter, half inch of, take it over here, of seam allowance. I don't normally sew in this like, space, so please uh, excuse me here. Make sure that you backstitch that. You can use um, a straight stitch like mine's on now or a zigzag. I probably would have put it on zigzag if I had thought to actually check before I started sewing. I've sewn all along the edge there. Now you're going to make some noise. <laughs> and we're going to box the corners of this bag. So what you want to do is just kind of flatten it so it becomes a triangle on one side. See how that is? And you've got the seam just right in the middle. And you're going to, I'm going to turn you down here. I'm going to measure about four inches in from the the tip there. Can you see that? Let me bring you closer. We've got four inches, so we're going to 
mark that right here and then just draw a line and you're going to sew on that line I, when you're done you can cut that off but it is not necessary i think i could really benefit from being able to film from above right now i'm really sorry i hope that you're getting all of this see i wrote through that line and i'm just going to sew straight on that i am going to use a zigzag stitch okay we're just going to zigzag on that line thanks for that stitch either use scissors, pinking shears, whatever you want to cut that off or just leave it. I'm just going to fold it in and leave it there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other corner. I would make sure that your flap is folded the same way as the other. It just helps it to lay flatter in the bag. But if you don't, no big deal. It will still work. can see how that works and when I turn it inside out those will just lay down like that under the cardboard or they could be up either way no problem but before we turn it back right side out we're going to go ahead and fold the top under over whichever direction you want to call it probably a, at least an inch And we're going to tuck the, um, the handles underneath here too. So we're going to actually turn it twice. Now, for some reason, it's not um, staying in place for you. That's where you could use pins or, or clips or whatever. So there is one more thing that you need that I forgot. And you're going to need a lighter or something if you were using the nylon um the webbing because you want to burn the ends so that they don't unravel. I like to use about 20 inches, um, give or take a little bit. That's a good length for me, but you can use whatever whatever you like. So if you like longer handles, definitely add a little bit more. I've got a measuring tape here. I'm gonna cut these straps. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these at 21. And I did cut one already, but you know what? I'm going to hold them up to each other and make sure that they're exactly the same. <laughs> because, nope, they're not. That wouldn't be cool. They got, they got to be the same. Now you'll want to, these will be inside the bag, but I would still give it a little singe. On both sides. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> all right, I've got my bag all folded down. I'm going to use some of these clips to hold the straps in place. And I want to make sure I measure um, on both sides so that they're in the same spot. The other bag, the one I showed you that was completed was about five inches from the edge. So we can do that again. Um, five to six inches seems to be a good spot. And I'm just gonna measure it to where I put my clip right at the end of my tape. Match it up with the other side.
you know, this doesn't have to be like super exact. So, you know, if you are not very experienced in sewing and all of that, don't let that stop you. This really truly is an easy project and it's, you know, it's not supposed to be like this perfect seamstress job. <laughs> before we sew these on into those places we are going to stick them up in there i i like to um in the center kind of sew them together it just makes for a nicer handle so i usually do about seven to eight inches long so if you divide it in half here you could just mark you know four inches and make sure you sew that whole thing here i'll show you and i'm going to use my daughter's Fisker's ruler with unicorns. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to, I don't have any pins down here actually. I only have my clips. Like I said, this isn't the area I usually sew in. So I marked that so that I will sew that far down. But I'm simply going to fold this in half. In all of that space that is folded in half, I am going to zigzag stitch it. And it will make a nice um, handle. So let's go over to sewing machine. Okay, this step is not necessary. Just want to show you how to if you would like to do it. It's, a, it's just something a little extra and that I enjoy doing. I'm going to zigzag stitch. Make sure you backstitch. softer, easier holding handle, at least for me anyway. <laughs> All right, I just repeated the same thing with the other strap. So we're going to slide it underneath here. You do wanna make sure your straps are facing the same way if you um, sewed them down in the middle like I did. So see how you kind of have this opening? I like to have that facing out on both of them. I'm just going to take that clip, stick the strap all the way into the, so it goes all the way to the top here. Do the same thing. Just hold, I'm sorry. <laughs> hold it in place there with the clip. Go ahead and do the other side. And then we're, we're going to flip them up after we sew them here. So we're going to just sew all the way around and that will secure it under the edge. And then we will flip it up and we'll sew like an X there to secure it all the way. I'm going to try this angle. Hopefully it works <laughs> that you can see it well. I am using a straight stitch right now and I am just going to go all the way around on that edge. I will um, kind of backstitch over where the handle is just to give it some extra strength. Just in case that other angle wasn't so great, I thought I would bring you over and do part of it from this side. Sorry, I know that's loud. It's probably, I just thought it's probably shaking the camera a lot. So it's sewn down this way, but to use it, obviously it needs to be up this way. So we're going to fold it up, flip it if you want. And then we're just gonna sew um, 
across here. You can go back and forth, do an X, whatever is comfortable for you just to secure that all the way up. And we'll do that obviously on both handles. Let's switch back to a zigzag stitch and I am just going to secure it here and here. Making sure to back stitch. and secure. You can do um, an X or something like that if you want to, which I did and I can show you. It's kind of makes it look sloppy. <laughs> so I prefer this. All right, I've turned the bag right side out. I spared you all that noise and did it off camera. So you can see it's a pretty tall bag since I didn't cut any um, of the length off other than to straighten it. But that's really nice for like, if we're using it for the pool, there's plenty of rooms for towels and things like that. But if you wanted to have, I guess more of the square, <laughs> shorter ones, just cut it off. Just make sure you keep in mind your um, design so you, that you don't end up having some of that being taken up by the, the bottom where you're folding it and stuff. So now you can either be done or you can put the snaps on. I'm going to put snaps on this one, so I'll show you how to do that. All right, I have my press here and I have three sets of snaps. So you have the, the female and the male side plus the ends. I will have to switch out this inside part when I move to the male side, but I will show you here. The female first, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna put three snaps in obviously. So we're going to just eyeball it. If you want to get exact, you can measure and I'm just gonna put a snap on each side and one in the middle. And so you'll need your little, uh, a dowel, um, is that what they call it? An awl, an awl. Well, okay, you'll need this thing <laughs> to poke the holes. So I am just going to make sure it's lined up, make sure your straps are lined up together so that when you snap it, it's snapped evenly. And just poke the hole through the feed bag. Don't poke yourself with this thing. I've done that before and it doesn't feel good. So you have a hole through both sides. We'll use the female side first. So put the snap, this part on this side, the other part on the inside. Let me see if it makes it easier if I put it down. Just with a this there. Line this up. Give that a good squeeze. Ta da! Now I'll just go and do the rest of them. I thought I would show this just in case you have never done this before. Your pliers should come with a little screwdriver when you need to change out whether you're using the male or female snap side. You could, I guess, get away with using the smaller one on both, but if you want just a good seal on it, you really need to change it out. So this is the smaller one. And then you're going to line that hole for that up here. 
so you can put the screw back in. Make sure that's lined up right there. I have thought about buying another one of these just so I can not have to switch back and forth, especially when I'm making something with a lot of snaps and I don't want to do that, but I never have. So here we go. We'll do the other side. Our snaps are all in place. I'll go ahead and snap those closed. Isn't that awesome? I just love that. So you could add more, but I, I have found that three really is enough for what I'm using it for. But thanks for coming along as we made this tote bag. Let me know if you try it and how you like it. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see some more videos of where I make some things here on our homestead, I'll pop those here. Thanks for watching. Until next time, God bless.